Hello. Welcome to our little shop. It's Monday and it has been a manic Monday. I'm halfway through the day. I've decided to get this Mustang out that the customer brought in. Been through a lot of abuse. Actually this is pretty sad. This is an L series Mustang. I'm going to guess between 64 and 66 year wise. We'll find that out later. Man it's been through a lot. It's been repainted. There's some nasty chips missing at the side of the body here. The electronics do not work. We don't know what's up with that. The bridge has had tape wrapped around it to where it's stuck where it won't move. Everything's corroded and rust up back here pretty bad. But the real clincher here is somebody changed a nut and put a brass nut in it. And I've seen this before. This is just ridiculous. Where they've just destroyed the front of the fingerboard there where the nut slot is. So we're going to fix that too while we're in the middle of all this. Like I say, it's an L series. Here's our serial number. Get some glare off of it. There you go. There's a the serial number. This is quite a shame here. And the sad thing is, I actually have a soft spot for these guitars. I remember working one uh, entire summer in my youth to buy my first good electric, which was one of these Mustangs. So anyway, we're going to tear this down and see what we've got. Uh, we don't know what we're going to get into yet. We're going to try to get this thing back to the respect that it deserves. So it's time to roll up our sleeves and get dirty. Well, when I started checking out the electronics, the first thing I had noticed was there's supposed to be a ground wire going from the bridge to this cavity over here, which is usually just a piece of string that they screw down underneath the bridge and it connects underneath this plate. I see it's been replaced here with a red wire that's going over here somewhere and this one is loose. I wonder if that's his ground. That would explain a lot. <laughs> um, man, I hope these pickups are good. This front one has not had a cover on it for a while and even though I can do it, I really don't want to rewind it if I don't have to. So maybe we'll look out here electronics wise. We'll see. Just noticed something else here too cool factor just went up. We still have the original pots. That is a good thing. Well, as it turns out, our pickups are all right. The cool thing here is the dates on them are uh, 7 20 65. So, we are looking at like a 65 model. The ground wire being loose was the problem with electronics not working. However, uh, just like the rest of the guitar has been butchered up a lot, the wiring is mangled. And something else here, let's see if I can get this out of here. We have an insulator, <laughs> a little piece of cardboard stuck in the switch, both of them. There's one here also that I can't get out with one hand. Anyway. Actually, no, that's not cardboard. That's an envelope tab. Okay. So we're going to completely rewire this guitar. We're going to put vintage wire back in it, make it look right, and wire it up right. Something else I noticed. Uh, these earlier Mustangs and Duo Sonics a lot of times had reverse mount pickups in them. So when you had both pickups on, they were hum canceling. I should say out of phase modes because we have two. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to tear this down. Uh, I'm going to rip this whole guitar apart. Something else I noticed in here, um, when they paint a guitar, they paint it over the shielding plates and stuff. We're going to clean all that back up. So about 20 minutes from now, I'm going to have this guitar in a whole lot of pieces. The neck's going to come off, the tuners are going to come off. 
Um, the bridge is going to come off and I can start touching up this body a little bit while I'm doing some other stuff. But uh, this is going to be a little detailed before we're over with. So, okay. Here we go. There we go. Disassembled. I cleaned up the ground plates here so we can tell what's going on with them. Gonna reattach them a little better. I've taken the one bridge insert out so I can do the ground properly. Oh, squirrel. Okay, that's taken care of. So, the date on the neck heel is also June of 65. Had to clean some of the red paint off of it. I've freed up the truss rod. I've taken the tuners off the neck and the epoxy to end brass nut come off fairly well. So we're really ready to get into the meat of this job. And just in case you doubted me, total time so far, 29 minutes, 43 seconds. So we're going to start filling in this body a little bit here, do some touch-ups here. And it can be drying while I'm doing the electronics and a few other things. So we're going to get this rolling. I've cleaned up the end of the fingerboard area here where the nut goes. And we've got it prepped for the new piece of wood we're going to put there. Then we're going to recut the nut slot and reshape all of it and refinish the end of it. I brought some scraps of rosewood over with me today and sorted through them and found one of the color kind of matches. We're never going to get a match, but you know, I got as close as I could. And I've been soaking that piece of wood over here in a little bit of boiling water to make it pliable. I was going to actually clamp this between a clamping call for frets and another sanding block that I'd made for an earlier job. But I came across something else that's going to work just fine. I have a little clamping block here I had made to repair an acoustic electric guitar that had had the jack pulled through the body. So this was made as an internal clamp to clamp the crack and everything all together. The cool thing is the radius on this is just slightly under seven and a quarter. So if I clamp this piece in this and let it dry and it springs back a little bit, it's probably going to be exactly the radius I need to glue back on here. So let's see what happens with all this. All right. So far, so good. It didn't crack. Apparently the boiling it and soaking it made it flexible enough. So we're going to let this dry overnight. We'll see how this works out. <laughs> Uh, I love it when a plan comes together. Now we're going to turn our attention to this mess. Oh, there we go. That looks better. Moving on. Okay, turning our attention back to this. Since it's been several hours overnight, we're going to unclamp this and see what we've got here. Oh yeah, look at this. This is going to be great. Okay. So, I'm going to rough fit this a little bit. Get it glued on here. I'm not going to glue the back edge here because I'm going to have to resaw it again for the nut. I'm going to try to line some grain up here a little bit. Maybe something like that. But yeah, I can't ask for a better fit than that. That's, uh, that's pretty good. So, love it when a plan comes together. 
I catch a lot of grief for Powers' plans, but uh, occasionally one works out. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, I have this rough shaped and glued in. I've put a couple pieces of masking tape here to keep me away from the fingerboard while I'm rough leveling this in. It was just a little bit thicker than the fingerboard, which I'd planned on. But we're uh, moving along here, so I'm going to scrape this down some. Get that thinned out a little bit. I'm going to sand it some. We're going to carry on with this until we have it the way we want it. So this is going to take a while. Actually, it's going pretty quick. there a little bit. Means we're getting close. <laughs> we better stop right there for a few. Oh, that's only a few thousands difference. Seems to be just a little high yet. All right, so we're going to carry on with this. I'll get back to you. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. There's just a lot of sanding and a lot of dust. Well, there we go. That is pretty much taken care of. This has worked out pretty well here. So we need to get on our touch up for this. And while that's drying, we can be doing something else. Well, while our nut extension is drying and all that, and we've got our touch up still going, we're going to turn our attention here to this bridge. We're going to take this apart, clean it all up. Got to take the cool kids masking tape off of the bridge feet here so it works like it's supposed to. Looks like we're going to get into some serious wire brushing here. The cool thing about these Mustang saddles, if they're too bad, there's no height adjustments or anything on them, you can clean them up as well as possible. If it is not satisfactory, you can just flip them over. The bottoms are still clean. So we see how this turns out. Oh, that looks a lot better. I just cleaned up all the saddles on a wire brush on a drill. And basically just cleaned everything else up. Pretty good shape. All right. Well, we've got the nut area all taken care of. Actually, the collar came out pretty well. They're not too bad. We've cleaned up the neck, front and back. Cleaned the fingerboard all up. So we're ready to stick it back together. But I think first thing we're going to do here is start fitting my nut blank. 
we have to make this into a nut. Yep, old school, the only way. So, I think we're going to do that next. Then we're going to remount the tuning keys and the string tree and all that. Actually, I cleaned up the uh, tuners a little bit too. Just got the surface rust off of them. Uh, the patina is still there. We're going to oil these up a little bit. The uh, machinist wax to use to lubricate these with years ago is probably a little cruddy at this point. We can't get it up. We're going to lube them a little bit. So that'll be one of the next things. But we're moving along here. So let's get this nut cut. We have our nut blank roughed in and the two outside string slots rough cut for spacing wise. We'll space those out with calipers in a few. String trees back on, tuners are on. Look at these tuners. They look pretty good. They cleaned up really nicely. Still look old though. Neck is on the body. And look, I touched up these big chips. They're not perfect, but <laughs> looks a lot better than those huge gaping holes. So, we're moving along here. We're winding down to the final stretch. We've got to get our nut slots cut and the nut cut properly. Of course, we've got a string of guitar to do that. But we're winding things down here. We have it strung up. We've cut a nut slots to the right height. We still have to finish the nut. But while it was strung up at this point, I went ahead and finished setting up the guitar. I've set the bridge height, the intonation, balanced the tremolo up, set the pickup heights. All we have left to do now is final shape and clean up the nut. I want to add a spacer under the string tree to rise it up a little bit. Got a little clicking going on there with the tremolo. String it back up, clean it up, and we're all done. Gotta say, this kind of uh, gives me a flashback. I mentioned earlier that I had uh, bought a Mustang as one of my first good guitars. I actually owned two of these. I had one very similar to this that I bought used of all things for $25 because they couldn't straighten the neck out on it and the hardware is really bad shape. Uh, I figured out how to get the truss rod to work properly and actually set that guitar up as the first guitar I ever refinished. It was originally red and it came out looking just like this one so like I say this is kind of a throwback for me. The one I bought new was actually a 72 model competition Mustang with the tummy cut, the bevels, you know, the racing stripe and all that. But I'd actually picked up one of these slab body ones, like I say, very cheap used and used it for a second guitar. I played both those guitars for quite some time until I moved up to a Strat. At which point I was very disappointed with the tremolo on the Strat because I'd gotten used to the Mustang tremolo that actually worked. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people don't realize these uh, Mustangs, the tremolo is one of the best tremolos Fender ever had on their stock guitars. When it's properly set up and adjusted, it will stay in tune. So let's get this finished up. Okay, well, we're all finished. Nothing like the satisfaction of uh, putting a 55-year-old guitar back in service. So just to recap, we've got two new pickup covers. I cleaned electronics, rewired it, cleaned up his bridge, bounced up the tremolo, set the intonation, all that. Cleaned his fingerboard and frets. Made a new bone nut. Cleaned everything up here and got it all functional. So there we go. The guitar CPR version of a 65 Mustang. 
So, hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, play nice.